Mr. Chancellor, it is my great honor and privilege to present to you one of the heroes of the Green Revolution, Dr. Gurdev Singh Kush, for whom it has been said the work that he has conducted and the results that he has achieved has passed the lips of almost half of the world's inhabitants. Born in a small village of Punjab, India, he received his BSc in agriculture from the Punjab Agricultural University and a PhD from the University of California, Davis. He spent most of his professional life at the International Rice Research Institute in the Philippines as a plant breeder. Ce scientifique a contribué de manière exceptionnelle à repousser les frontières de la génétique de riz. Au cours de sa carrière de 35 ans à l'Institut international de recherche en riz, il a dirigé le programme de mise au point des variétés de riz améliorées et résistantes aux maladies et aux insectes. Plus de 300 variétés de riz élaborées sous sa direction ont été mises en circulation en Asie, en Afrique et en Amérique latine. Dr. Cush's exemplary contributions to food security have been recognized worldwide. He has received the Japan Prize in 1987, the World Food Prize in 1996, the Rank Prize in 1998, the Wolf Prize in Agriculture in 2000, and the Golden Sickle Award in 2007. He has received honorary doctorate degrees from 13 universities, including Cambridge University and The Ohio State University. Dr. Cush has been elected to the U.S. National Academy of Sciences, the Royal Society of London, the Russian Academy of Sciences, the Chinese Academy of Sciences, and the Indian Academy of Science. Monsieur le Chancelier, je vous présente Monsieur Gurdev Singh Cush, pour que vous lui conferiez le grade de Docteur des Sciences Honoris Causa. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to invite Dr. Gurdav Singh Kush to deliver the convocation address. <laughs> Chancellor Arnold Steinberg, Principal Suzanne Fortier, Mr. Kip Covert, Chairman of the Board of Governors, Dean Chandra Mandra Motor, faculty members, recipients of degrees and awards, distinguished audience, ladies and gentlemen. It is an honor and privilege to be with you on this occasion. I would like to convey my heartiest congratulations to these students who have received their well-earned degrees and awards today. I also wish to congratulate your parents who have done so much in supporting you in many ways. Finally, I would like to acknowledge the dedication of McGill faculty for guiding you, inspiring you, and for mentoring you. Graduates, you read almost every day about the challenges of climate change, 
energy scarcity, political turmoil, and expanding frontiers of space exploration. However, poverty and hunger in the developing world are rarely discussed. One billion people or 15% of the world population go to bed hungry every day and somehow survive on a daily income of $1.25. When I graduated from college in 1950s, 50% 50 of the world's population was poor and hungry. Agricultural productivity was dismally low. The specter of famine was often discussed. Famine 1975 was the title of a book written by Paul and William Paddock in 1967. The authors predicted large-scale food shortages, political upheavals, and famine during 1970s. Fortunately, Rockefeller Foundation and the Ford Foundation established two centers of excellence in agricultural research the International Rice Research Institute in the Philippines and the International Center for Maize and Wheat Improvement in Mexico during 1960s to develop technologies for increasing food production and to alleviate poverty and hunger. These institutes were later supported by the World Bank, and donor agencies of developed countries, including CEDA, the Canadian International Development Agency. High yielding disease and insect resistant varieties of rice and wheat developed as these institutes led to major increases in food production. While the world population doubled from 3 billion in 1960, to 6 billion in year 2000, rice production increased threefold during the same period. From 200 million tons in year 1960 to 6 billion tons in year 2000. Similar increases occurred in wheat, pro wheat production. Besides improving food security, the cultivation of high yielding crops improved wages and income of farming communities. Employment increased, poverty was reduced, high yielding crop varieties require more labor and more labor per unit of land. Marketing of a larger volume of produce and increased demand for non-farm goods and services resulting from higher incomes generated additional employment in trade, transportation, and construction activities. This economic miracle in Asia was therefore triggered by growth in agricultural income and that helped expand the domestic market for non-farm goods and services. In spite of these achievements, pockets of poverty and hunger still remain in parts of Asia and in most of Africa. The relentless population increase in several developing countries is another major concern. For example, the population of Pakistan, which is currently at 180 million, is projected to overtake that of US in 2050. There will be more people in Nigeria in 2050 than there were in all of Africa in 1950. Most of the poor are small farmers. Therefore, most important strategy for reducing poverty and hunger is through increasing farm productivity. This requires, again, high yielding crop varieties 
with the disease and insect resistance and tolerance to abiotic stresses such as drought and salinity. Fortunately, advances in molecular and cellular biology have given us new tools such as genetic engineering and molecular marker assisted selection for crop improvement. Several crop varieties have been developed through genetic engineering. These so-called GM crops are widely grown. For example, insect resistant GM cotton with Bt genes from a bacterium is widely grown in US, Australia, India, China, and several African countries. It has drastically reduced the need for insecticides and has increased the income of small farmers by increasing yields while simultaneously lowering the cost of production. GM cotton is also beneficial to the environment and health of farming communities. GM technology is also being employed to improve product quality, such as golden rice, which has been developed to alleviate vitamin A deficiency amongst the poor. Unfortunately, there is a lot of ignorance and debate about the safety of GM crops. GM crops have been grown since 1996. There, they were grown on 430 million hectares in 27 countries on six continents in 2013. The ingredients produced from GM foods are found in hundreds of foods and are consumed worldwide. No legitimate evidence of harm to human health and the environment from these products is known or is expected. Societal anxiety over these products is in some ways understandable. It's fueled by a variety of factors, including lack of understanding of the process of genetic engineering, a lack of reliable information about the regulatory safeguards, and a steady stream of negative opinions in the news media. Opposition by activist groups and general lack of awareness how food systems have evolved over time. Saying that the public apprehension over GM food is understandable, it's not to say that it is valid. There is no evidence that genetic engineering creates any new environmental or public health risks. Scientists know far more about the genetic makeup, product, product characteristics, and the safety of every GM food than the food produced using conventional methods. They can test to ensure that transgenes are working properly and that nutritional aspects and yield potential of the crops is not impaired. The Food and Agriculture Organization, the World Health Organization, and most of the world's scientific academies have stated that GM foods are safe for human consumption. The opposition to GM food remind us about challenges of teaching evolution, claims that climate science is fraudulent, and pockets opposition to vaccination. Graduates, the most valuable part of your education is how you have learned to analyze such divergent opinions and controversies in a logical and scientific manner. You must endeavor to strengthen the social fabric of our society and to eradicate hunger, poverty, and ignorance from the face of this earth. Your alma mater has prepared you well for these challenges. As we celebrate your bright future, I hope you will use your education to solve tomorrow's problems. Remember, 
Learning is a lifelong process. Your schooling may be over, but your education continues. Make use of what you have learned at this eminent institution and live up to your potential. Good luck, congratulations, and may your paths be blessed. Thank you.